Welcome back to this Modifying Doom 3 editor series. Today's episode looks at how to build a creepy hallway complete with spooky demonic decals and scripted moving lights. If you haven't already, now's as good a time as ever to subscribe to the channel or leave us a like, dislike or comment below the video. Click the notification button for alerts when we post new content or visit the channel Tom's World for a neighborly visit and for a complete list of all our videos. If you've ever wondered how the Doom 3 game was built, stick with us as we explore the fascinating world of video game level design in the Doom 3 editor. So there's this nifty effect in one of the Doom 3 maps, specifically the uh, Communication Underground map, where there's this kind of hallway and uh, these sort of demonic uh, decals and other symbols sort of kind of form on the walls and they kind of chase down the hallway. And it's quite scary. And the first time I saw it, I really wanted to figure it out and how to replicate it. There's also a similar effect in the Mars City Underground map, uh, kind of when all hell breaks loose, sorry for the bad pun, and those sort of decals flash across the walls. And I thought those were very, very cool. So this is what we're going to replicate today. So we're just in the editor and I drew a little simple map. Now we could have uh, did a straight hallway, but I think this effect works much nicer on a curved hallway because it kind of comes around the corner. And of course, you know, uh, cliche frightening things, always something hiding around the corner, right? So uh, we did a curved one here. Now in the original id map, it was actually two straight hallways that kind of intersected in 90, but I thought kind of this curved hallway would be nice. So we could jump in there real quick and have a look. It's nothing fancy. Uh, let's see here. I think I would call it decal two. No, what did I call it here? Decals two. Decals two. Yeah, there we go. Decals two. All right. And it's really nothing fancy. I just want to show it to you guys. It's a little big, but it works quite nice. Uh, we're not going to show how to do curved hallways today, but I do definitely plan to do that in a future video. We'll do some curved hallways, and we'll show how to do vaulted ceilings as well. It's quite nice. And uh, if you remember, patch meshes don't seal. So if you're wondering, I mean, the, all these things are patch meshes. And if we hide them, all these square brushes here are just caulk uh, textures, right, to seal that map in. And if we look in our XYZ world from the top, we can see all that. All we've got is a player spawn, info player start, and just two lights. And uh, pay attention to how we name the lights because we're going to do some scripting today. And then we just kept the default names, uh, light underscore one and light underscore two. They're just white lights slapped in there. So that's kind of our starting point. And I thought, yeah, this would be easy. Just, uh, you know, slap in some. Uh, patch meshes, turn them into funk statics, hide on hide done. Unfortunately, ain't so simple. So we're just going to grab this wall here and we're going to draw out a patch mesh with our cock texture real quick. It doesn't have to be as big as the wall. Okay, so there it is there. And we'll make it a little bit smaller than the wall. Oh, and I do apologize, you guys. I am sick today, but we're like the post office here, right? Nothing discharges us from our YouTube duties, whether we're sick or not. So, okay, there it is there. So let's turn that into a patch mesh real quick. Uh, let's see here. Simple patch mesh. Three by three is fine. We'll do that. Now, if you remember, patch meshes only show a texture on one side. And you can see here that uh, our texture is on the wrong side. And you could flip that with the XYZ flip. Another way you could change that, if you go up to patch here and you look at matrix here and invert, you can also flip it that way. And uh, since I like to keep my maps tidy, I'm going to go into my surface inspector. I'm going to flip that just so it's natural. Okay, looking good. So we'll go like that. Okay, so the text, uh, and we also want to position it so we don't have Z fighting. So let's go up here to our grid, uh, 0.5. And let's just shift it one unit away from the wall just so we don't get that Z fighting. Okay, done. Now what we want to do is go into our media folder, textures, textures. The ones we want to look for in our subfolder called hell. I know, hell, okay. And we want to scroll down here, and the one we're looking for are these ones with uh, either a prefix or a suffix of spectrum or spectrum light or something like that. And the one I'm looking for is called, I think it's called Pentastic, and this is alphabetical. So there it is, Pentastic one, and we want to make sure we got this spectrum, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And some other ones down here, they actually start with the uh, uh, prefix of spectrum. Those are the ones we want. This is different symbols and pentagrams and, and the like. So we want to go to this Pentastic one spectrum. All right, so let's select our cock brush or our uh, sorry patch mesh and let's hit it with that thing let's go into our surface inspector by hitting s let's just hit uh, fit okay that's good there all right so that's there let's unhide everything let's save and compile let's jump into the map here okay there's our bsp and we're going to jump into our map and we get 
Uh, nothing. Okay, and the reason for that is that these decals with that prefix of suffix spectrum are a little bit special. And if you look into the material file, which is a little bit of code that basically tells the Doom engines how to handle these um, these textures, I think what Doom did here, and they built them special for that little sequence that we're trying to replicate here, is either they're messing with the alpha channel or it's hard coded into being transparent. But of course, the big question is, well, how do you make them not transparent? So I actually had to go into the map and figure that out. And how they do that? Let's just grab that and hide everything else. How they do that is with a light, but you need a special texture on it, and that's sort of the rub. So we're just gonna go, uh, let's see here, right mouse click on our XYZ window. We're gonna hit light, and we're gonna put that in. Let's resize that light. Actually, it doesn't really matter the size because these lights with this texture does not give us any ambient light. All it does is light up the, um, the actual decal, but I'm just gonna resize it just because that's just the way I work. I know it's kind of silly, but. I'll illustrate this point in a minute, so let's just go off here. So we're uh, XYZ, I think we only need to have about 120 height here, right? Apply, yeah, that's good. Our uh, Y, well, I don't know, 180, I think would be fine. Apply, and we're just resizing our light to fit that uh, that decal. If we look here, remember that purple sort of box around the light tells us how big that light volume is. And then this is our uh, other access here, and we could probably take this down to 120, let's hit apply. And we're just resizing that light. Okay, there it is there. And let's just make sure it's hitting that decal. So let's deselect that and unhide everything. Let's hit save. Oh, one thing that we want to do is that the ambient light that we have already on there, let's just crank that down because I just want to illustrate the fact that this, that this uh, light here, which by the way, we forgot to put that special texture on it. So let's go ahead and select that because this is, this is what actually makes it work. So, all right, so we're gonna go into texture here and the actual texture we wanna find out is lights round fire underscore spectrum light. So this is all alphabetical order. So we're gonna scroll way down here and you have to have this texture, otherwise it's not gonna show up. So there it is, lights around fire underscore spectrum light. Make sure you select that, otherwise it's not gonna work. Okay, so there it is, apply, okay. And then what I said I was gonna do is take our ambient light, this guy, and we're just gonna pump it down here just so this accentuates this a little bit. So let's just go here, bring this down. Okay, apply, okay. All right, let's save. And let's compile, PSP. Let's go into it, and now we can see the decal, okay? And you can see that that, 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 that light with that round fire underscore spectrum light doesn't give us any ambient light. All it does is light up that, uh, that uh, decal there. So that's kind of the, the gag. Now, um, so basically what we have to do is we have to plaster all these decals all over the walls, and basically we have to move that light over these decals down this hallway. So that's what we're gonna look at now. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna get rid of that light that's uh, giving us illumination for that uh, decal. So let's get rid of that because we're gonna rebuild it. And let's get our ambient light and let's just bring its intensity back up again because we wanna be able to start our map, uh, you know, with basic lighting, so. Okay, there that is. All right, so what we're gonna do is we've gotta get these lights moving. So we're gonna go to the far end because this is where we want this movement to start. And I'm just going to grab these brushes here and hide everything else just to make it simple for myself. First thing I'm going to grab here in my media window is I'm going to go down to our common folder and I'm going to grab a no draw, uh, basically a no draw texture. So where are we here in our common up here? And let's hit no draw. Where are we? No draw. No drop, no draw. There we are. And I'm just going to draw a little brush here, and I'm going to make it, ooh, I don't know, maybe 16 by 16 by 16. Let's zoom in here. Okay, 16 by 16. And I'm going to kind of center it uh, between the walls, and I'm going to center it, uh, you know, up and down in the ceiling, just roughly centered. There it is there, and we'll put it up about there. Whoop, that's not really centered, is it? Well, it's pretty close, right? Okay, let's go here, 16 by 16, and center it up and down. I mean, more or less, there it is there. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a path for our mover, and we could actually totally script it, but because we have a curved hallway, that's going to get a little complex. And what we're going to use is a spline, and a spline is just a fancy way of saying a path for our mover. So what we do is we draw that little 16 by 16 by 16. You can draw it any size with a no uh, draw texture on it. And I'm going to right click in my XYZ window. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find an entity called Funk Spline Mover. And we're going to end up with three entities here to make this thing move. So Funk Spline Mover. It's alphabetical and there it is there. You can use a Funk Static, but I'll use a Funk Spline Mover because that's what it uses in that um, 
map. So there it is, and its origin is center, so that's fine. We don't have to hit Shift Z, Shift O. And then what we want to do while it's selected is we just want to give it a name. So let's go into our entity window, and we're going to just name it something. We need to do this because we're going to uh, sort of define it in our script. And I'm just going to call it, well, keep it simple, spline. Okay, there it is there, and it took, and that's fine. Now, we're going to zoom around here a little bit just to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So once I have that thing selected, I want to come down here into my entity uh, editor window. I want to hit this thing called Curve. It's going to bring up a sub menu, and we want to attach some nerves onto this thing. So let's go ahead and do that and hit OK. And if we look back at that uh, spline thing, we can see it's drawn this sort of blue path. And we can edit that path, and we have to come up here. So let me just oops, let me just see if I can shift this window up here closer. Okay, and I'll zoom in on the window. We've got these buttons here called Edit, Add, Insert, Delete. Now if we go Edit, uh, where did our little spline go? Uh, let's see here, Curve. Nerbs. Okay, okay, there it is there. And we want to hit this edit, and you can see it gives us three points. And this kind of almost works like a Bezier curve if people are familiar with um, uh, with uh, Photoshop. And we can move these around, and you can see we can kind of edit this path. So what I want to do is I just want to get this path sort of straight for now. So let's put that there. Let's grab this one and get it there so it's more or less straight. So straight on that axis, straight on that axis. We'll go to the top. Okay, there it is. Now I want to add one more to this. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add just so I have four. Now we can control this a little bit better. So let's unhide everything. Let's grab that last point. And then we're going to take it down here to where we want this path to end. So I'm going to come down here near our player. Then I'm going to use these other ones to kind of get this round kind of path down my hallway. And you have to play with this a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you got to get it kind of right. Now, obviously some of you are saying, hmm, you can use this for camera movements and cinematics. Yes, you can. But you can see this is a nice easy way to kind of get this curved movements. So that's looking pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. That's pretty good there. And it's nice and straight. Okay, there it is. There's our spline done. Okay, so we got that. Now, the next thing we want to do, let's just hide everything except that spline. What we want to do is create a mover here. So I'm going to actually go down to, well, I'm going to select a texture we can see. Now, normally movers, you'll do a no draw texture because we don't want to see it, obviously. But in this case, we want to see it at first because we just want to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So actually, I'm just going to jump in here in my texture folder. I'm just going to grab that base floor texture. That is an opaque texture. I'm just going to draw it right over top of our spline uh, mover here. Now, don't forget that spline mover is not a mover. It's just a spline. This is going to be our actual mover so 16 by 16 by 16 now interestingly enough you can put this mover anywhere because the script is going to tell it to follow the spline but just so we kind of keep our map tidy and we keep all our entities together in case we have to move stuff or fix stuff that's the best place to put it so once it's selected let's right click mouse button click XYZ window we're gonna to go to funk mover okay so there's funk and it is alphabetical, so funk mover. Okay, there it is, and its origin is fine. And then we just have to add a couple of key valves into this funk mover. So let's go down here while it's selected. First thing we want to do is we want to give it a name. So let's go name, and we'll just call it something simple, mover. Hit enter, so it takes, let's make sure it's there, name mover. And we have to add one more key valve in here because Funk movers are actually solid. So if we leave this thing solid, if the player happens to, you know, it happens to hit the player, it's going to hit them. And this thing's going to be invisible and what's going on. So we just add a key val of solid. Is that right? Solid. Where are we here? Yep, solid. And zero. And this just makes this entity non-solid so it has no collision. Okay, there it is there. Okay, done. So let's unhide everything. Then the one last thing we want to do is we're going to put in a trigger because obviously we have to trigger this somehow. So let me just get the player here, hide everything else. I'm going to get my trigger uh, texture here real quick. Let's see here, common. Let's go down here. Trigger. There we go. Where's it? Ooh, trigger. Okay, there we are. Uh -huh. And we're going to draw it right across there nice and big so the player doesn't miss it. Okay, there it is. Don't forget, it's just a dumb brush. We're going to right click. We're going to go to trigger. And we're going to make it a trigger once. I guess if you want to trigger it a bunch of times, make it trigger multiple. But we'll go trigger once. All right, so trigger once. It's got its origin. It's fine. And we're going to add one key valve to this trigger once. 
you know, basically we're just gonna call a function that we're gonna write in our script. Now, I'm kinda doing this backwards, normally you write your function first and then you go back into the map, but this will save us one step. So we're gonna go call, and I'm gonna name that function eventually spectrum underscore move underscore me, and let's hit enter. I think that's all we need to do on our map, and I think we are ready for our script. So let's jump out of here and let's uh, get into our script. So before we get into our little scripting section, there's one little little thing that I just wanted to go over real quick, and that's this, just the difference between a parentheses and a bracket. So you can see that these are actually parentheses, they're also known as round brackets, and uh, these things are just brackets, or square brackets, I call them squigglies. It's just really important to know the difference because I'm going to be referring to that, and within our uh, scripting, we really need to uh, get that correct because they're, they're not interchangeable. Now I like people to think that I'm really smart and I can write script just off the top of my head, but uh, truth be known, that's not the case. I know just enough to be dangerous and just enough to make changes for my own maps. And if you remember, we unpacked those game files here, unzipped them, and I put them in this folder, Game 3 Packs. And if we look into Pack Triple uh, Zero, we go into this folder called Script. And then we want to look for that map, which is Calm Outside. That's actually where that hallway is in the Doom 3 game. And we scroll down here. Yeah, we could find it right there, this bit here. So I just copy and paste that, but obviously I made a lot of changes to it, but that's sort of the beginning of it. So let's just get out of there. Go back here. And I've actually got the version that I used in a map called Decals, because obviously I did a dry run here just to make sure everything works. But we're going to recreate this, and by sort of cutting and pasting parts in, I'll explain it. If I write this all out, guys, this, this video is going to be like 10 hours long, and that's going to be boring, so I don't want to do that. Uh, so let's go to Notepad here. Let's start a fresh Notepad, and of course the white canvas is always frightening, but it doesn't matter. Put them side by side, and we'll do a little bit of cutting and pasting, and I'll kind of explain each line a little bit. Normally coders, when you have a lot of code inside a script, they give these little headings. And if you remember, any line with a double forward slash does not read. So you can see there's all these forward slashes. All this stuff does not get read by the engine. It just gives coders a little heading so they know, uh, you know what this bit of code is. It really helps. We don't need it because we're not going to have too much code here. So we're going to start off with this line here. And if you remember, that trigger that we put in right now calls a function called spectrum underscore me, under, sorry, spectrum underscore move underscore me. So we're going to have this first line here and I'll explain what this is in just a second so we could go copy and we could put over here and go paste all right and because I've got a bra an opening bracket here you always want to make sure you got a closing bracket so I usually put them in just so I don't forget if you don't close it it's not gonna work so to name a function we just write void that standard that has to be their space and then you can name the function whatever you want and then you got two uh, parentheses space and then our bracket and then whatever we put in here and then our closing bracket very important okay so the bit that we're gonna start with is this a little bit here so let's just grab this and I'll just copy it and we'll paste it in here and then I'll just discuss each line here. Now formatting is important in code. I mean you can format this any way you want but kind of keep it nice so it's easy to see what you're doing. Okay, so this first line, basically what we're doing is we're setting up a loop because what we want is we want those lights to start at the end of the hall, come around, go to the end, and then we want it to jump at the beginning and keep sort of repeating in case the player ends up in that uh, little hallway for longer than whatever we determine. This way it's going to keep looping, it's going to jump back to the start and go to the end, start in. You can make it go back and forth, but this particular sequence looks nice this way. And so we're just setting up this loop and you do that in Doom 3 and C++ Plus plus has got a number of ways to do loops, but it's quite simple in Doom. Uh, we just write the this little bit here while, and then inside the parentheses one, and then our little bracket, and just make sure it's got the closing bracket. So anything that follows this bracket, well, anything that's between this bracket and this bracket, this one and this one, is going to loop. All right, so that's that line. Now, if you remember how we reference stuff on our map, we called our mover a mover. So there it is there, and we reference it by a dollar sign. So we go dollar sign mover, and what we're telling that mover by uh, typing here dot time is we want you to take three seconds to do that move from start to end. Now, we can mess around with this. Three might be a little fast, but we'll just put in three for now. But the nice thing about script is you can edit in real time. We can change that number and have a look at it real quick. We'll leave it three for now. These two lines here, again, we're referencing our mover, axel cell time and decel time. I left them zero, but they're nice to have because, for example, if we're, say, moving a car, we don't want it to snap 
right away to its final speed. We want it to kind of accelerate and decelerate as it does its move. So those are kind of nice little things we can put in there. We don't need it for this sequence. I put them in there just to be handy and to show you guys that these are options that you can put on these movers. Uh, okay, now here we want this mover to follow that spline. So again, we reference it, dollar sign mover dot, and then this is the command is start spline. You have to type it in exactly the way it is, start with a capital S spline. And then within our parentheses, we tell it what spline to follow. And if you remember, we named it spline and we reference this by dollar sign spline. And also notice that each line in this code always has a semicolon, very important, okay? Just the way the structure is. So again, this line is telling that mover, hey, follow that spline, and we name that spline spline. So Follow the spline, and it's the spline that we're following. Kind of confusing, but you know what I'm getting at here. These sys dot wait for, and then we put in whatever we're referencing. This just tells the system to wait until that mover does its thing. Not so important in this, because that's basically all that's going on. But if we have a bunch of code here, it all kind of plays at the same time. And we want to make sure that that mover does its move completely from the start of its path to the end of the path before anything else happens. So we always put system wait for, and then we tell it that mover. So don't do anything else until that mover ends its movement, okay? A little esoteric, we don't really need it in the script, but as you start to get more uh, lines in here as script and stuff starts to happen all at the same time, uh, sometimes we do have to tell other stuff that's happening to wait for that mover to finish. So I always put that line in there, it doesn't harm anything. This is a good thing called uh, sys.wait, and then we define it in parentheses. It's just we're telling the system to wait one second, okay? So basically when that um, mover starts on its path and it goes along that spline, before it jumps back to its start, it's gonna wait one second and then it's gonna jump back to its beginning. And that's what that syswait1, very handy. You find that all throughout the script. And then finally, what we want to do here, this is a line here, we don't really need it for this sequence, but it's important, for example, if we attach a car to our mover. What we want is that mover to always face in the direction it's moving. All right, so we define the mover, uh, dollar sign mover dot, and then this is the actual uh, command is remove initial spline angles and then the rest of this parentheses semicolon and this line here basically tells that mover always face in the direction you're moving again not so important here because our lights can spin around but if you ever put uh, cars on there or other movers that require it to face in the direction it's moving this line is very important okay so we have our first uh, bracket there a closing bracket there we've got our opening bracket there open it so this is all good now if you remember for scripts to work there's three things that have to happen so let's go up here to file save as. So three things have to happen. The name of the file has to be the same of our map as our map. It has to have the suffix of dot script and it has to be in the same folder as our map. So here we are in, well in my uh, file folder structure, common, okay, Doom 3. This is where the game is and this is where my um, decals 2 map is. So it's in base maps and here it is. And we're going to name this script decals 2. We're going to give it a suffix of script. So again, our script is named the same as our map, decals2. It's got the suffix of dot script, and we're saving it inside the same file folder as our decals2 map. So let's hit that. Let's close this for now. Minimize this. I'm just gonna jump into that file folder, uh, my actually uh, Doom 3 game, and just make sure that that script is in that file folder. So base, maps, and we look down here, and there it is, decals2. So it's in the proper place. Now we should just be able to now go back into that map. Now this is what I mean by real-time editing and scripts. We don't have to recompile uh, our map or save it or anything like that. Once our map work is done, we can change our script, pop it open, and every time we run that map, it's gonna grab that script. Now not a big deal when we have a small map that takes you know two seconds to compile but imagine if we had a huge map that takes you know an hour two three five hours whatever it is to compile we would have to wait all that time before we see our script changes so let's go back into our map there it is there and f2 title and let's load our decals too and now we should see that mover so let's see what happens here so we're gonna hit that trigger and then here comes the mover, but a bing. Okay, and it goes to the end of its thing. Now we got that weird sort of shadow there. We're gonna get rid of that because we're gonna make this thing a no draw. But you can see that it starts there at the end of the hall, comes around nicely, a curved path, goes to the end, waits a second, remember sys wait one, and then bounces back there and comes over there. Now again, we're gonna hide that mover in a second, but we just wanna make sure it's doing what it's doing. Now, if we go in here real quick, we're gonna have to minimize that actually. If we go back to that script, let's make one quick change here. Uh, so where is it? Decals two. Uh, this here mover time. Oh, let's let's really make it dramatic. Let's say ten. Okay, and let's save it. 
If we go back into the map, we can see that change in real time. So let's reload the map. And when we hit that uh, trigger, it's going to reload that script. And now that mover is going to take its sweet time and take 10 seconds to make its move. And you can see it. That's way too slow, but you can see by how quick we can change things. And then we can see it almost right away on the map. Okay, so there's the first little bit of our script. Let's get out of here and let's continue on with a few more entities to finish the sequence. So we're back in the editor. So the first thing we're going to do is just that mover. We're going to replace that texture with a node draw because obviously we don't want to see it. So let's go ahead and put a node draw on there if it will let us. There we go. Now let's just save that so we have it. All right, so I'm going to grab these two and just hide everything else. That's our spline and that's our mover. And let's put in our special light that's going to illuminate our little decal. So we're going to right click on XYZ window. We're going to click on light. Where is he? Light, 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 light. There he is there. Let's place them over top, their mover. Okay, he's nice. And I'm just going to go into J. And first thing we're going to do is just uh, adjust that size. Just make sure that it hits uh, you know, all the walls and the ceiling and all the decals. I think 250 works pretty good. And again, because it doesn't uh, illuminate anything other than decals, the size is not super important, nor is the color really. Okay, so why is that not going equilateral? Should give us 250 equilateral. What's going on here? Apply. Okay. Why is that not going equilateral for us? Oh, there we are. Okay, we've got it. And let's attach that texture, which is round fire spectrum light. It's all the way down here. Round fire spectrum light. Okay, so that's got that proper texture. And then there's a couple of key valves that we have to put in here. Apply it. Okay. So let's make sure it's selected. There it is there. Let's go into our entity window. It is a light. And there's two key valves we have to put in here. We have to put in bind and we go tab. And we want to bind it to the mover because obviously we want it to tag along, go for a ride with the mover. So there that is. Let's hit enter. Just make sure it's there. Okay, it is. And then the next one we want to put in here is start off because don't forget we don't want the uh, decals to show until we hit that trigger, right? Want everything to look like an unassuming hallway until we hit that trigger and everything goes crazy. So start underscore off. I just want to make sure. Just let's look up here. Yeah, start off. Causes the light to be off. Okay, just want to make sure. Start off. And then we'll put a number one here. Okay, so that's done. Let's make sure it took. So it's bound to the mover and it's starting off. Okay, perfect. And let's just see what its name is. I want to name these kind of logically. So light underscore one and light underscore two are the two lights that are on, just white lights at the beginning so we can see the entire hallway. Number three is going to be our special light to light up our decals. Now we're going to light one more. If we just light up the decals, that sequence is going to be too dark. So what I want to do is I want to take light number three and I'm just going to clone it. I'm going to stick it right on top of light four. We're going to make a couple of changes to this. So let's go to J and I want to first off take up that texture. I want this light to just show, uh, you know, normally. I don't need, want it to be a, a spectrum light. And all we want to do there is round fire. Is it up there? Round fire. There we go. And we'll apply that. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to turn it red. And I can do that with this color here. And again, we could use the slider, but you can also put in RGB values. And I just happen to know it's 153 for red, 51 for green, and 0 for blue. And that should give us a very deep red. Okay. Yeah, kind of a deep orangey red. And that's just going to highlight that, that, that sequence because if all our lights are off and we've only got the decal light on, that sequence is going to be far too light, or sorry, far too dark. This is going to give us a little bit of ambient light that kind of scrolls across the hallway to help us out a little bit. Okay, so we got those two and let's just go apply an okay and let's just make sure that it also has the key valves of bind. It's bound to the mover, yes, and it's starting off because we cloned it, right? So just uh, carry it over those key valves. So that's there. Let's unhide everything. And then one last thing we want to do is we want to put a speaker in. We want that scary sound. So I'm just going to right click and throw in a speaker. There it is there. Let's put it over here. And let's just note its name. Where is it here? Its name is speaker underscore one. Let's just remember that name because we're going to have to reference it in our script. And where is it? Let's just make sure it's kind of in the middle of our map. And there it is. Okay, so speaker one. So first thing we want to do is let's assign a sound shader to it. Because I'll remember, just slapping in a speaker doesn't do anything. We have to give it a sound. So let's get rid of the key valves and the little key valve fields. 
So while this is selected, we'll just press in the key field. We'll go to sound, and what we're looking for here, where are we? Sound, obviously. Okay, this is gonna be in the WAV folder. So web files, I hope it right. Okay, sound, Xeon, get way down here. Creepy, uh, creepy. It's like a little Easter egg hunt. Uh, screamscapes crying. Screamscapes crying. Okay, there it is there. Forward slash, and then we want screams01 web. Scream01 web. Okay, and let's assign that. Let's just make sure it took. So there it is down here. All right. Now, if you remember, we should be able to select it. We should be able to preview it. So we select it and hit F9. Yeah, okay, and there it is, and it's right out of the, the common map, and we can tell it lasts about seven seconds. So we're gonna actually give this speaker a couple more key valves. What we're gonna do, so we'll go down here, and the first key we wanna put in here is S underscore wait for trigger, because we don't want it to play until we hit that trigger, right? All right, and let's hit a number one, and let's hit enter. So S wait for trigger. I'm just gonna double check that I have it spelled correctly. And then the second we want to, the second key value we want to put in here, we haven't seen this one yet, but it's pretty simple. We want to put in s s underscore looping n one and enter. And basically, oh, did, it, did it work? No, we got to select our speaker, put the key value in s looping enter. Let's just make sure it's there. S loop. Okay, there it is there. Since this sound only lasts for seven seconds, if for whatever reason the player lingers in this hallway, say we get them fighting monsters or whatever, thing, or whatever and the sequence takes long, or it takes them longer than seven seconds to get out of this hallway, we don't want that sound to die. So we just want to keep looping that sound, playing it over and over again, until basically, yeah, well, we kill everything. So, okay, so I think we have all that in place. Let's just BSP to get this prepared. Let's jump out of here and let's continue with our script. So, where's our little script? Okay, there's our reference one, and here's the one we're actually writing. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to add in a few more of these things. We've already got this down here, so let's just grab the whole works here. Uh, we don't need it all, but let's put in this part. Well, let's put it all in, then we can just delete what we don't need. So, okay, so copy. And then we're going to just put it underneath here. So, yeah, that's fine. We can go paste. Okay, there it is there. All right, so let's explain this real quick. So, if you remember, we um, we can trigger stuff in our scripts by the line sys.trigger and then space. And then within parentheses, we can tell it what entity to trigger. And lights toggle. And our lights number one is on when the map starts. So, we reference that dollar sign light underscore one. And if we hit it with a trigger because it toggles and because it's on, when our little sequence starts, light two is going to go off. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing for light two. Now, light three and four, those uh, three is our special light for decals. Four is our little bumper light that's going to help to help our little decal light a little bit. Remember, they're uh, light underscore three and four. We're going to, since those are off right now, once we hit the trigger, we want them to come on. And all we have to do is, again, hit them with this trigger here, a system trigger, right? So they're off, and then we're going to hit them, so they're going to come on. So that's done there and there. These two we don't need. We're not going to need them. Ah, we might, but I'm just going to hide like I'm just gonna um, put the two forward slashes is because right now we're not going to reference these just yet so after we hit the trigger on the map and one and two light goes off our special light come on and then we're gonna wait a second we don't really need that but we'll wait a second once the lights adjust and then it's gonna hit our speaker right now we have to do since our speaker is off is hit it with a system trigger this is our script trigger sys dot trigger space and then within the uh, parentheses we put in our speaker one and that's what's the dollar sign. So we're hitting our speaker one because it's off, and then when we hit it, it's gonna play that scary sound. And then the rest of this is just our little mover. So we should actually be able to just save this. And one other thing we have to do in our map is obviously we need more decals. So we have one, one there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the video, and I'm gonna slap in these decals. Let's get them all over our walls, and then we'll see what our little script is doing now, okay? Stand by.
Okay, so I've put in the decals. Let me just maximize this real quick. It's a little mind blowing, but you can see I put in the decals everywhere. I probably went a little overboard. You don't need to fill the entire space with decals. Take your time, make it look nice, you know, resize them, uh, shift them, scale them. You know, I got lazy here. I just, on this entire thing, I just put the whole texture the way it was. Uh, kind of cheesy. You know, you could, you could resize these individual letters and put them all over the place nicely, uh, you know, shifting them and tilting them and all the rest of it. But just for illustrative purposes I just you know went hog wild right it's a little overdone but you'll see what I mean I just want to be able to illustrate this so can I close this window there we go that scared me I thought maybe hell was taken over there again I saved in BSP now one thing we want to change in the script before we have a look at this final sequence let's have a look at our little script there it is there remember we put this mover time in 10 that's too long let's put in I think we had three originally so let's save that might be too fast I think six is a nice number. We'll try three. Okay, there it is there. Let's go back into our map. We've compiled it already, so let's go here. And then we should be able to actually see the sequence. Okay, so here we go. It's a very unassuming hallway. Everything is cool. We hit that trigger, and all of a sudden the lights go off. Oh, it's very scary. And here it comes. There you go. Oh, yes. And very scary. Now... My big beef about this is it's a little dark, right? But I think that is the effect. I mean, that's what makes it frightening. And if we actually put our flashlight on, the player can kind of get around there, right? You can see the decals don't show when we have the flashlight on or anything like that. You can hear that scary sound. And it's like right out of the map, right? Very cool. Did I forget one on the end there? No, it's there. Okay. And that, that, that three seconds seems to be pretty good. I don't think that needs to get adjusted. All right, so let's get out of here real quick. I just want to... Now, the other thing we have to look at is how to turn this off, and we'll get at that in a second. But I just want to explain one little thing in that script. Those two lines I didn't use. So let's go into that. Okay, so where are we here? This one. Uh, these two lights here, I, I thought that maybe once the um, sequence begins and the decals are lighting and everything, I thought that was a little dark, and I ended up actually putting in a couple more ambient lights in there. Very, very dim, just to kind of bring up the light level a little bit. But I'm looking at it now, and I think it's fine. So I'm not going to put those lights on the map, and we can just take them right out of the scroll. We can delete them. But, I, you know, two, uh, two forward slashes, uh, the, those can sit there. They don't do anything. They don't affect anything. So... Okay, that sequence is looking good. Now what we want to do is we want to um, be able to kill the sequence. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to do that. All right, so we're back in the map, and I'm just going to, uh, we're going to set up how to uh, kind of kill this whole sequence and bring us back to the original state that the map was in when the player got into this hallway. I'm just going to hide these uh, decals because they are giving me a headache. So let's hide those. And I'm just going to grab a couple of these textures or a couple of these brushes just for reference so we could put a trigger at the end of the hallway I'm gonna kind of get a little fancy I'm gonna put in a plasma gun so basically when the player grabs this plasma gun it's gonna re replace everything back to the its uh, initial state so let's go for a weapon plasma gun make sure you don't select underscore MP because it's the multiplayer one so there it is let's get it down on the floor at the end of that hallway come on smaller grid size there we go and we want to make sure it's kind of oriented the right way it's kind of standing up on end right now it's, there we go lay it flat make sure it's not inside the floor in fact it's always good to have it one unit up okay there it is there now unfortunately you cannot call a function with a weapon and there's probably other entities that you can't call them with so we got to put in a funk relay so right click on our xyz map we're going to go to funk relay uh, I'm sorry, I lied. It's a trigger relay, not a funk relay. Trigger relay. So there's trigger relay. I right, put that in the map. And we want to put one key valve on that trigger relay. Let's just make sure it's right inside our map, which it is. Uh, it's called trigger underscore relay underscore one. We want to make sure that we remember that name. I think we need to remember it. Anyways, we can always come back to the map. All right, so we're going to put one key valve on that trigger relay. So we'll go to an entity window. And we want to call a function. And we're going to call a function called spectrum. So let me make sure it's spelled right. Underscore stop underscore me and hit enter. And let's make sure it took. 
so there it is call spectrum underscore stop underscore me now remember scripting and calls and that they take no prisoners you have to get it exactly right so just take a second and make sure you got it right nothing more frustrating when you try to run the script and something's not working okay so that's done and then we're just going to target that uh trigger uh, trigger relay with the gun so what we could do is we could grab the gun we could grab the trigger relay use our little control k trick and we don't see our path let me just see if i've got that selected show paths there it is okay and we can see the path right and also if we click the weapon it should have put in a key value of target and it's hitting the trigger relay okay that's good all right so let's unhide everything oh these decals are hard on the eyes um so we'll save let's compile we still have to write our script for this ending sequence so let's go ahead and do that right now save that let's go back out here let's get our two scripts open yeah, this is just our reference. All right. So the next function we want to put is this part down here. So let's just grab the whole lot of it. Copy. And let's put it after that ending squiggly, because it's ending squiggly we need for this first part of our script. So that's fine there. Yeah, let's paste that in there. Okay, so we're writing a um, function, which if you recall that... Uh, that trigger relay is calling spectrum underscore stop me. So void space, and then we name the function. And again, the rest of this we talked about up here, so we'll kind of fly through it. And just make sure that uh, it's got the bracket here. I uh, mind you to keep it consistent, we could come like that. There we go, it's more consistent. Aesthetics actually is important in scripting, guys. Uh, the, the thing is with formatting, if you format it correctly, it's easy to see mistakes. So kind of get into habits. I'm certainly not teaching you guys how to do C++ script. Tons of uh, tutorials on YouTube and websites and other things. Learn a little bit about them. It really does help when you uh, map in Doom 3. Okay, so let's look at this line by line. So when he picks up that weapon, system's going to wait a second. We know about that one already. We're going to trigger the light one, which is currently off, and light two. Those are our ambient lights, so those are going to come back on. And we don't need these two. And you know what? We were just using forward slashes to get rid of these. But to be technically tidy, let's get rid of them. I did not put light five and six on the map, as I explained a little bit a little bit earlier. So let's get rid of it there. In fact, let's get rid of it here too. We want to be conscientious coders. We want our code to look nice. Okay, there we go. I know it's nitpicky, but you know, best practices, you get into certain practices, it really does help in the long run. Okay, back here, so voice spectrum stop me, blah, blah, blah. System weight one, we're hitting that light one and two because they're off right now during that scary sequence, we wanna come back on. This line here is kind of important. Now, what this does is, when we started this loop, it's playing that loop over and over and over and over and over again, right? And when the player moves out of that area of the map, we don't want that to keep playing because it's actually using our CPU. And we want to kill that thread. We want to kill this loop. And this is what this little uh, function does here. It's system.killThread. And then here we're actually going into our, uh, we're, we're defining what actual function we want to kill. Now we have to change something in here because this is actually our decals too. So system kill, and then within these parentheses, we're actually telling it what script we want to go into and ours is actually decals 2 so we got to change this so decals 2 and then you put colon colon and then it's telling within decals 2 this is the function we want to kill and if you remember it's spectrum move me and we got it here spectrum move me make sure it's within these uh quotations right it's got to be exactly this way and then again the semicolon at the end so again this is telling the system kill that loop we don't want to keep running that loop we don't need it after we get out of that sequence yeah maybe you do need it for something but in our case we don't we don't want the cpu to keep having to grind that sequence so let's kill that thread there it is there now what we can do here is our mover, which remember that we put in uh, where we attach our lights on, we can actually remove it from the map. And my plan is never to use this sequence again. The player's gonna go through here and he's gonna move on. So we can actually remove items off the map, entities. We could do that by referencing a dollar sign mover, period. And then the command is remove and then those two parentheses and the semicolon. So we're gonna basically, uh, once he picks up that gun, that mover's gonna disappear, it's gone. Our speaker's playing right now, so we're going to hit it with a trigger, and it's going to switch it off. So dollar sign speaker underscore one, that's what we named it. Again, uh, semicolon. And then we're also going to, we can hit light three and four with a trigger and turn them off. But since we're getting rid of this entire little, uh, you know, the spline and everything else, or, or sorry, since we're getting rid of that entire little function, mover function, let's get rid of those lights too. We just don't need them anymore. And we could do that by first referencing the entity. So it's dollar sign. And remember, we named it light three and four. This is our special light to illuminate the uh, decals. This is our little light that gives us a little bit of ambience. And if we put 
dot remove and then a parentheses and semicolon. This is going to remove those two entities. It's going to take them off the map and they're gone. The only way to put them back in the map is if we rerun the map. And that's handy for just getting rid of a bunch of stuff that we don't need again. Again, depends on what you need it for, but that's very handy. So there it is. Let's save and let's just make sure that we uh, our sequence is complete here. So let's go back in the map. We've already saved and compiled it. Uh, let's just do it again to make sure because we did add the gun and we did add that trigger relay. I'm pretty sure I did save it and BSP it, but let's just be sure. So let's go into the map. There it is there. Okay, so let's move to the trigger and this sort of scary section starts and there it is. And I don't hear my speaker to see what's going on there. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, for some reason there was a little bit of a delay. Yeah, you yeah. know. Little, little, little quirks in the engine, but okay. So there it is, and there it is, and we can put some monsters. You can fight monsters. It's very scary. Oh, we see a plasma gun there. Yes, yes, yes. So we grab the plasma gun. System waits a second, and then everything should die, and our ambient light is back. Okay, guys, it took a little bit of an explanation. Um, of course, if we're just thinking about how to create a hallway with scary decals, that took a long time. But I think you're getting a lot of ancillary lessons along the way. And again, use your imagination. I've showed you guys how to create spline and movers and how to script them. Hey, attach a car to those movers, guys, and you got a moving car, right? So there it is. We're going to look at that later on. We'll look at more scripting and movers. But there's your little scary hallway. Enjoy. Thank you for watching this Modifying Doom 3 Editor series. Please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned as we post more Doom 3 gameplay in our retro game series and more editor videos are coming up in the near future. Thank you for all the support and wonderful correspondence. Stay well and all the best.